Hey, what's up everybody? I'm gonna do a classic rock reaction. This is Led Zeppelin, man. Led Zeppelin, uh, the start of their double album, Physical Graffiti. Yo, man, I, I'm telling you, I, uh, I've been having a really, really good time just um, taking this little uh, walk with Led Zeppelin, man, going through all of their different uh, albums and checking out their great uh, creative range. Um, that's the thing that's forever going to uh, stand out for me in my mind, uh, where Led Zeppelin is concerned. Their great creative range first, and then thereafter their great musicianship. So uh, yeah, man, especially the last album, it stretched me so far in so many different directions. Houses of the Holy, um, and overall their entire body of um, uh, album works up to this point, man, has just been astounding and incredible. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, a number of you have mentioned to me that uh, this is um, their uh, best works uh, in your personal opinion, and that uh, if it isn't um, ranked their number one album, it's certainly in the top uh, two or three. So hey, looking forward to it, man. And that's quite uh, that's saying quite something. It being a, a double album. So let's check this uh, first song out, man, uh, that being Custard Pie. Led Zeppelin, Custard Pie. Let's get it. Yo, man. Shake them on down. Book a white song. It's an old blues tune. Sure. 
piece of custard pie. Almost every single line of this song is from a blues tune. These guys are incredible. I chew on a piece of your custard pie. Wow. <laughs> okay, so that is... That is custard pie. Incredible. Guys, this song, Custard Pie, every single word, every single verse of this song, uh, they're lifting from, uh, like, uh, dozen blues songs and creating one song uh, man um, there's uh, I, I like your custard pie custard pie blues uh, uh, brownie McGee there's um, uh, all of these verses drop down baby uh, let your daddy see um, uh, drop down drop down mama and dream with me oh man all of these are all uh, blues tracks incredible that you can take all of these awesome uh, tracks from different places and make this one collective incredible song uh, Shake Em On Down is from uh, uh, Book of White <laughs> incredible man I chew on a piece of your custard pie wow this reminds me of uh, the Lemon Song. Again, the Lemon Song is like an assembly of, um, I'm guessing, a minimum of a dozen blues tracks. They lift all of these songs and verses and little catchphrases, and then they um, bind them together and then fuse it together with incredible instrumentals. Yo, this song is just compiled with a whole whack of nuances of blues everywhere almost every single word that is amazing that is an amazing piece of work how long would it take to sit down and construct a song like this do you realize the extent of your blues awareness and knowledge to be able to write a song like this so were. This song is uh, five paragraphs, so that's uh, around 125 words. To be able to just uh, orchestrate and organize and then put instrumentals to it, add your emotion, add the spirit of your delivery, and that incredible guitar riff in the middle of it, yo, man. If this is what is awaiting me in physical graffiti. I'm tripping already. And I'm only on the first song. It's a double album? Yo. This has me just tripping. I can't wait to play this for my pops. He's going to trip. Um, so <laughs> All right. So let me just chill the hell out and um, get on to my structure, man. I don't want to turn a one song reaction into an hour long uh, uh, rant and a talk. So let me get on to my structure here. That was awesome. That was really excellent. So I'm uh, what I'm going to do here, man, is I'm going to uh, just leap over.
the intro of the band, and I'm just going to get into、um, reading of the song because it's really I'm looking at the、um, the Wikipedia pages here. It's really intertwined and intermixed with the album itself. And being、uh, a double album, there's a tremendous amount of information. So I don't want to spend my entire reaction time reading here, but I definitely there's so much album information that it's mixed in. So I'm gonna read a touch of the album stuff first, and then I'm gonna read a little bit of the song stuff first. Okay. So、uh, starting with the album, Physical Graffiti. Physical Graffiti is the sixth studio album. By English rock band Led Zeppelin, it was released as a double album on the 24th of February in '75 by the group's new record label, Swan Song Records. The band wrote and recorded eight new songs for the album in early '74 at Headley Grange, a country house in Hampshire, which gave them ample time to improvise arrangements and experiment with recordings. The total playing time covered slightly over two sides of an LP, which is typically 52 minutes. So they decided to expand it into a double by including previously unreleased tracks from the sessions for the earlier albums Led Zeppelin III, IV, and Houses of the Holy. The album covered a range of styles, including hard rock, progressive rock, rock and roll, and folk. Wow, that's a great mixed bag. Of、uh, songs, man. I'm looking forward to that. Also, looking forward to touching on a little bit more of their folk stuff. The album was then mixed over summer of '74 and planned for an end of year release. It was delayed because of the sleeve, however, which was designed by Peter Kirsten and featured a theme around a tenement block in Manhattan, New York. Physical Graffiti was commercially and critically successful upon its release, and debuted at number one on album charts in both the U.S. and the U.K. It was promoted by a successful U.S. tour and a five-night residency at Earl's Court in London, and has since been viewed as one of the world's strongest albums and the artistic peak of their career. Physical Graffiti sold 16 times platinum for Led Zeppelin, and that was in the U.S. alone. Wow, man, that's、uh, album info. So,、uh, song info: Custard Pie. Custard Pie was recorded at Headley Grange in early '74. The first take was played at a faster tempo than the finished version, with various improvised vocals. After a basic run-through, the group then discussed possibilities for rearranging it. Page played the guitar solo through an ARP synthesizer. While Jones overdubbed a Honer clavinet part and Plant played harmonica, all masterful, fantastic musicianship in this track. Man, this song is based on various American blues recordings, including Blind Boy Fuller's 1939 "I Want Some of Your Pie" and Brown McGee's 1947 "Custard Pie Blues." This is one of the few Led Zeppelin songs they never played live. It is speculated that custard pie is a euphemism for female sexuality and/or genitalia. Other songs which associate pie and women includes the Beatles' "Wild Honey Pie," the Four Tops'、uh, "Sugar Pie Honey Bunch," and of course Warren's "Cherry Pie." Critical reception. Critic Jim Miller stated that the double album was the band's Tommy Beggar's Banquet. And Sgt. Pepper roll into one. Physical Graffiti is Led Zeppelin's bid for artistic respectability. Critic Robert Christgau was less impressed, however, writing that except for side two, the material often wanders into wide tracks, misconceived op opi, and so forth. And after a while, Robert Plant begins to grate. Unquote. Hmm. Okay, man. I'm just one song in, so、uh, we'll see if you're right about that,、uh, Robert Christgau. NME's Nick Kent reviewed the album three months before it was released. He speculated it could be the group's best work to date, saying the album's tonal density is absolutely the toughest, most downright brutal I've heard all year. 
Physical graffiti is a tour de force through a number of musical styles, from straight rock to blues to folky acoustic to great orchestral sounds. Unquote. Hmm. <laughs> Completely uh, very, very opposite um, critical reception, but hey, that's okay. I'll see if you're right, uh, Robert. I'll, uh, I'll take up that challenge and I'll be as unbiased as possible going through the whole uh, album. Yo, man, hey. Let's talk about this song for a minute because I'm still tripping out. Like I said before, man, this song is uh, literally a bunch of blues uh, tracks woven together. Woven together so well, so elegantly, spiced so elegantly, uh, to the point where it's just um, it's just so smooth the way it flows, man. I'm not joking, ain't gonna tell you no lie. I want to be to your Christmas pie. You got to give me some of it. You got to give me some of it. You got to give me some of it. Boy, you give it all away. I'm not bragging, but it's understood. Everything I do, I try to do it good. You got to give me some of it, yeah. You got to give me some of it. You got to give me some of it, boy, you give it all of it. Now your custard pie looks good and nice. When you cut it, please save me a slice. You got to give me some of it. Yes, you is. You got to give me some of it. You got to give me some of it, for you give it all of me. Hey, now. Hey, Uncle Fuller. That is a masterful piece of work. I wonder how long it took them. Well, you know what? This is the thing. Because they have such a, 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 a great command of the blues and their knowledge of the blues, if you are four guys sitting together and writing this song, you might cover a lot of time um, or, you know, uh, cut it down. So it could have taken them uh, a day between the four of them. It uh, could have taken a little bit longer. But if it's just one person sitting there fusing together all of these things, it could take so long. But in any case, all the same, I just give them credit for their vast, vast um, knowledge of the blues and to be able to kind of in their minds, I see what would work with what and, you know, pair it all together. That's I'm telling you, man, that's an impressive piece of work right there. And just that effort alone warrants two thumbs up and a pat on the back. You know, I'm glad that it doesn't sound like shit as a result. It's fantastic. But, you know, depending, it didn't matter what the end result would have been. It's the effort that I'm applauding here. Thankfully, though, it's fantastic and it's masterful and it sounds great. Um, speaking about its sound, uh, here's a question, man. Um, here's my question to you. How come I haven't heard this song before? If physical graffiti is supposed to be their best, among their best, if physical graffiti is supposed to be, um, I mean, what, 16 times platinum, why have I not heard this? Why have I heard Black Dog and Rock and Roll um, a number of times? And now, in the recent 10 years, also Immigrant Song, I'm going to throw into that. Why have I heard those songs dozens and dozens of times, but have never heard this one? Why? And you're not going to uh, convince me that those songs are better than this one. This song is just as good, just as masterful, just as epic as these other uh, examples that I just gave you. So why uh, haven't I heard it before? It's a double album. Uh, Perhaps uh, maybe it's it was never released as a single, and the others were. Um, could that be the reason why? Um, what am I missing? Is there something that I'm missing? Um, answer that 
for me? That's the biggest question that I have right off the top of my head. A song this good, a song this epic, just as masterful as all these other songs. Why haven't I heard it before? That's my question to you. Answer that for me. Um, I can sit here and talk about how great this song is all day and how impressed I am with all of these incredible, familiar blues tracks. I'm telling you, man, every single line that he sang, my ears kept jumping and kept jumping. And uh, my mind's eye kept uh, going back to when I was a kid, um, listening to these things, um, going about my business and my dad is in the background playing these old tracks. And, uh, yo, man, He's gonna trip when he when he hears this tune. Let me tell you, um, his expression when I played um, the lemon song for him said everything. You know, his eyebrows just went wide. So I can imagine it's gonna be the same thing with this because he's gonna hear these familiar tracks. So uh, yeah, if I'm gonna trip, if I'm tripping, he's gonna really trip. So with Led Zeppelin and physical graffiti. Uh, uh, here's another question. Is it like um, a decent balance between like their folk and their blues and their rock and roll and their psychedelia? Or are they leaning more in one particular direction with this album? Um, let me know about that. Because physical graffiti, I'm thinking now, I remember doing um, one of my very first reactions was... Um, one of their songs off of this album called In My Time of Dying. And um, I remember almost right away, I recognized the old tune. And, uh, you know, and so now I'm listening to this one and I'm wondering if it's going to be primarily based on a lot of old blues, old gospel, old um, uh, country folk uh, type tunes. Let me know about that. That would be really, really cool. Just so I have an idea uh, going forward. Anyway, man, hey, fantastic song. I'm really digging it. I'm going to listen to it a bunch of times. And uh, I'm going to play a game and try and see how many um, uh, blues tunes um, are linked to this song. You know, um, there's different verses, different words, different passages. I'm just going to play a game with myself and just see how, how many I can identify. Anyway, man... Um, let me just uh, skip down here and see if I've got any notes before I bounce. Okay, so um, I'm shooting this on the 30th, 31st. So by the time um, you see this, uh, my patrons will see this first, but by the time my subscriber and uh, general viewership sees this, it'll probably be the second or the third of the month. And at this point in time, I still don't know uh, who the artist of the month is um, but it's safe to guess um, that it's probably Van Halen because Van Halen um, was um, just slightly leading and then on its heels was Aerosmith and the Doors so um, if, if I have to um, be a betting man at this point unless a dozen patrons join at the last day and I'll come up with a vote for either Aerosmith or The Doors. It's safe to assume right now that it's Van Halen that's the artist of the month. Um, I'll bite my tongue if I happen to be wrong. <laughs> anyway, man, hey, this was a fantastic song, and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting into physical graffiti. I also know that Kashmir uh, awaits me um, on this. It's another track that um, I'm familiar with, but not in its very, very full entirety. I never had the opportunity to just sit down and totally just listen to it from beginning to end without interruption or anything like that. Um, and I am not including Puff Daddy's Godzilla rendition of um, uh, Kashmir as being um, too complimental to the source material. Uh, the original definitely is, um, you know, the, the epic rendition. So no slight to Puff Daddy. I love, uh, I love me some Puff Daddy, but yo, know, his rendition just does not touch the, uh, original, uh, that being Kashmir. So I'm looking forward to sitting here and just going through the entire song Kashmir from beginning to end without any 
interruption. That's one of my biggest uh, things that I'm excited about with physical graffiti, among discovering all of the other tunes that you guys mentioned to me that are really, really good. Anyway, man, I'm going to bounce. Thanks very much for joining me. Hope you like my reaction. And uh, I'll definitely catch you. Uh, what, when am I going to do this again? Um, so where are we? We're in around the 2nd or the 3rd of, the, uh, of August. So, yeah, my next Led Zeppelin reaction will be around the... Uh, uh, eighth, eighth or the ninth, um, depending on how uh, busy I get. So uh, look for it within a week's time, seven days' time. Okay, have yourselves a good day, and uh, I'll catch you in my next something reaction. Peace. <laughs>